Welcome to Newsbreak Chats. Ako po si Chai Hofilenya, ang editor ng Newsbreak. Ito ang investigative section ng Rappler. Um, ngayong araw na ito ay makakasama natin ang editor-at-large ng Rappler na siya ring sumulat ng librong bagong kakalaunch lang nitong uh, Tuesday uh, sa Ateneo. Si Marites Vitog, ang author ng Rock Solid, How the Philippines Won Its Maritime Case Against China. So ito yung libro, kung wala pa kayong kopya, um, I think mahikita ito sa fully booked La Solidaridad and other bookstores. Wala pa yata sa... Sa national, Wala pa. No? Inaantay natin. Oo. So, um, hanapin nyo Rock Solid by Marites Vito. Um, si Marites ay isa rin kilalang multi-awarded journalist na marami nang naisulat sa libro. Bukod sa Rock Solid, um, meron pang iba na katulad ng Shadow of Doubt, Probing the Supreme Court, at Ang Hour Before Dawn, The Fall and Uncertain Rise of the Philippine Supreme Court. So welcome, Marites. Thank you for inviting me kahit part na ako ng Rappler. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, bukod din kay Marites, kasama natin si Paterno S. Makel. Siya ang nagko-cover naman ng Department of Foreign Affairs. Sa, kay Paterno tayo, huhugot ng latest developments at saka insight din tungkol sa, tungkol sa China at sa DFA. Hello, Paterno. Hello. Thank you, Ren. <laughs> Suki rin natin siya kasi last episode, nandito rin siya. Kung may mga katanungan kayo or mga comments or suggestions, uh, maaari nyo itong ibahagi sa, sa aming tatlo. Um, itag nyo lang ang Newsbreak, sorry, at NewsbreakPH sa Twitter. So, sali lang sa conversation. Siguro, um, let's begin with the, the book itself. Parang the process of putting everything together. Um, why write about... West Philippine Sea. It's not a very exciting topic to most journalists. Exactly, Chai. Nung nanalo ang Philippines July 2016, may mga friends nagsuggest, sabi, Marita, sulat mo tong librong to. Sabi ko, eh, bakit naman susulat ko yan? Yung mga nakakalat-kalat lang yan na rocks <laughs> and reefs and islands. Ang layo-layo pa. Mm-hmm. I mean, parang like many others, Siguro at that time, di pa tayo aware, we were following the news as it happened mm-hmm. online and Philippine, Philippine written news and overseas. Uh, kaya lang, hindi, hindi, walang impact masyado mm-hmm. sa akin. So, pero nung I started to read again, and then first na ginawa ko, pumunta ko sa website ng Permanent Court of Arbitration, Nandun lahat ng documents ng Philippines, yung sinabmit natin, mm-hmm. uh, 3,000 pages. Hindi ko naman binasa ah, yung 3,999. Mga 2,999. <laughs> <laughs> hindi, hindi. I, I read the, the decision called the award, yung petitions natin called memorial, mm-hmm. tsaka lahat ng almost all our annexes, yung mga cables between Manila and Beijing, lahat ng communication. So, nung binabasa ko yun, sabi ko, how interesting pala ito, may history talaga tayo with China na mahirap palang, mahirap palang mag-negotiate with China mm. on sovereign rights dito sa uh, mga reefs na ito. At saka, yun palang reefs na yun, uh, they, they are part of this trading route mm-hmm. na malaki ang uh, kinikita ng mga, uh, the income that's taken from that trading route is huge uh, for most of the companies and countries that fly, fly through that. So, may, sig- may geopolitical significance, Mm-mm. may significance sa ating bansa dahil ito yung struggle natin for equity uh, in dealing with China. It's, it's an unjust situation and they took over some of our Alam reefs. Mo, after the after the launch ng Tuesday, sinimulan ko nang basahin yung libro. Hindi ko pa, hindi ko pa tapos. Mm-hmm. Paterno, tapos ka na ba? Hindi pa rin. Okay. Pero yung nakakatuwa siyang basahin kasi it's very light reading mm-hmm. and it's an easy read. Para kang, kung akala mo kasi pag going by the title tapos mapa yung makikita mm-hmm. mo, akala mo very intimidating tapos West Philippines, uh, West, uh, West Philippine Sea or South China Sea yung, mm-hmm. yung topic. Pero interesting yung stories behind mm-hmm. there that na, nahalungkat mo. Um, what was the juiciest <laughs> that, you, that you found out Una, in the course of your yes. research? Um, kasi I wanted, gusto kong masagot yung tanong, 
paano ba nag-decide si President Aquino na mag na isu ang China? May tension ba sa cabinet? So ang lumabas sa uh, interviews ko and sa research, hindi sa cabinet nagkaroon ng tension. Nagkaroon lang ng effort within the office of the president coming from the executive secretary's office na in the latter part na ito ng 2012 kasi we filed early 2013. Okay na parang dissuading the president from pursuing arbitration kasi um, malaki ang impact sa relations with China. Imagine, sabi nung tong school of thought na ito within the OP na ma-affect yung trade natin, investments, at saka um, China will is a very powerful country. Eh, pwede silang mag-revenge. You know, militarily, it's not war, pero pwede silang mag-occupy ng Uh, 45 pala yung islands or reefs na na-occupy na nila. So, apparently, sabi ni President Aquino when I interviewed him, hindi niya matandaan yung ganung argument. Ang tingin ko lang, because he was set already, by the time, set na yung mind niya. In fact, nung isang cabinet meeting, it was brought up, he asked the question, anong impact sa tourism, sa trade, etc.? And ipen according to Del Rosario, uh, the time foreign affairs secretary, na hindi ganon kalake ang malulus natin in terms of trade, mm -hmm. kasi at that time China was our third largest trading partner, so they made the case na we won't really lose that much. And then kay Aquino naman sa kanya, what was I asked him? Ano ba yung what was the greatest motivating factor? Sabi niya, if we Don't fight for it. We lose. We lose this entire uh, area in our easy to China. But there no sa, sa DFA ba at the time? Uh, meron ng sense na ganon na um, na debate ba? Merong fear that if you pursue uh, this particular case, may, may, may tangible costs. Well, yung DFA uh, dahil uh, pinampamunuan siya no ni uh, Secretary Del Rosario yung messaging nila palaging uh, streamlined yun eh. Mm -hmm. Kaya nga interesting na interesting interesado rin ako doon sa ano ni Mother yung uh, yung book dahil marami nang kasabi na para siyang nobela yung libro mm -hmm. niyo ngayon. Ang tanong lang lagi ng karaniwan tao dahil parang nobela yan, yung ba merong mga bida at kontrabida dito. <laughs> so yun, meron po ba? <laughs> yun ang tanong. Oo. Oh. Kasi iniisip ng mga ibang tao na Aquino administration uh, parang lahat, monolith. monolithic. Oh, so Pero dito hindi. ba may mga ganong characters mm -hmm. at pwede nyo bang... Oh. So doon nag-umpisa yung uh, parang wag na tayong pumunta sa arbitration. So si, si Miss uh, no, Pinoy said let's go on. Mm -hmm. nung, nung may kaso na... Sino ang nag-convince sa kanya na let's, let's go with this? Alam mo, uh, a number of people, uh, especially I think Foreign Affairs Secretary Del Rosario and his team at the DFA, C. Henry Bensurto, ben they made presentations, may, uh, not just once, mga ilang beses din. At saka, I think the President on his own kasi na experience niya, nung nakaupo na siya, yung 2011, yung uh, China stop yung survey vessels natin from surveying in the Reed Bank. Nagalit siya doon. That was the first, sabi niya. And then 2012, yung Scarborough Shoal, yung the China controlled it. Doon talaga nagalit siya. I mean, it was, uh, ang sabi niya, it's, they're acting as if they owned everything. Tapos, when Aquino went to an ASEAN summit in Phnom Penh, and uh, hindi ni reflect ng Phnom Penh Prime Minister yung sense of the, of the Philippines and the rest of ASEAN, he broke protocol, I think. I think Paterno knows this, na nagsalita siya at sabi niya, that's not what was agreed upon. So, na-sense na, na niya, wala na tayong ibang chance. ASEAN is not helpful, mm -hmm. tapos ganito ang ginagawa ng China, so malaking risk din yung kinuha niya. But with the push of then Foreign Affairs Secretary Del Rosario, There were uh, there were a couple of things that you mentioned in the in the preface, yung, yung introduction ng, ng libro. Mm -hmm. Sabi mo, 
um, there were a few lessons that you picked mm -hmm. up from, from this project. Among them, that the country has no strategic thinking and is anchored on short-term interests. Uh -huh. uh, what made you say that? Because, uh, remember, nung kailan ba natin, when did our Philippine Senate kick out the bases? 1992, right? 92, yes. 92. Tapos, uh, hindi ta wala tayong transition plan. The country did not have a transition plan na kick out yung American bases. So, may vacuum. Uh, ang thinking ko, dapat pala, although ako, I was for the removal of the American bases, mm -hmm. dapat pala, meron tayong what, what is a phased a face face out or something like that so that maka-prepare man lang yung Philippine military yung defense establishment natin kasi nagkaroon ng vacuum doon pumasok yung China sa mischief free 1995 mm -hmm. quietly mm -hmm. so yun yung so things China like that took advantage of yes the, of the vacuum the US getting out correct mm -hmm. and then even dito sa pag decide to sue China uh, walang mga think tanks, for example, in Singapore or even in, in Jakarta, in Malaysia, may mga think tanks sila na they already look forward to issues na ganito. At meron na silang, you can tap experts. Dito kulang pa tayo. So, sana yun ang ma-improve ng govern, future governments. You also said that um, yeah, actually we're an archipelago pero yung navy mm -hmm. natin medyo, medyo mahina. So, given the recurring itong maritime issues, mm -hmm. no, uh, paulit-ulit to eh, hindi, hindi talaga tumitigil. Um, are, you, are you essentially saying na kailangan talaga i-revisit ng, ng pamahalaan ng government kung ano yung priorities niya in terms of even the budget, halimbawa, yes. na da, sana bigyan ng priority ang Navy, mm -hmm. siguro? You know, at, at nagulat din ako dyan, I didn't realize, I interviewed, na-interview ko yung mga dating, siguro for of the former chiefs of Philipp the Philippine Navy. Ang, one of their sentiments is, we never had a chief of staff of the Philippine military na taga Navy, except Biazon, General Biazon, who was only there for about two months. Mm -hmm. So all army yan, mostly, mostly land, land-based. So dun yung nakita nila na hindi masyadong binibigan ng importansya yung Navy, even in terms of, um, policies, uh, puro, kasi insert, it's hard to blame the Philippine government kasi ang biggest threat natin is communist insurgency. Yes. Kaya lang, siguro pag-isipan na ito, i-revisit or i-rethink ng Philippine government, is it still the communist? Parang hindi na. Yun nga. Hindi But na. up to today, Oo. yun pang sinasabi. So baka it's external threat yes. and terrorism. Mm -hmm. Baka iba na ang so, threat. Hindi pa rin Hindi pa. That's why, uh, again, we need um, new, new thinking when it comes to security threats to the country so that we reprioritize the budget. Again, Paterno, mm -hmm. tatalon ako sa DFA. Meron bang ganun? Wala bang, di ba merong um, FSI? Uh, mm -hmm. So, dapat doon yung parang think tank within, within the department. Wala bang ganung uh, shift in thinking? Of course, merong... Uh merong mga tension, uh, iba-ibang school of thought. Pero, syempre, nakadepende talaga yan doon sa chief architect of uh, foreign policy palagi. Uh, magagawa nila yan siguro in hush-hush uh, tones. Pero, uh, syempre, ang nagbabaton pa rin yung Pangulo. At sa ngayon, si Pangulong Duterte, ang uh, mindset niya palagi is uh, US versus uh, China, uh, Asia versus the West. Ganun lagi ang kanyang uh, um, thinking. Kaya, kumbaga, yung, uh, yung uh, ibang mga polisiya na nai-influence din ng uh, ganun. Kasi marami na nagkasabing experts na outdated na yung uh, ganun klaseng uh, para bang mm -hmm. uh, black and white mm -hmm. lang lagi ang ano. Siyempre, nai-influence din yung mga priorities ng, uh, ng Pangulo. So, yung uh, policy will follow. Ang, I think ang malinaw na malinaw, di ba? Parang this current administration is not really giving a lot of importance to the ruling, no? Parang wala lang, din a downplay. And I think the thinking is that kasi we have to engage in pragmatic diplomacy. Hindi naman natin kayang 
banggain ang ang China. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on You know, about this? ano yan eh, false, false yung dilemma na pinipresent ni President Duterte. Sabi niya, either we talk or we go to war. Mm -hmm. False yun, kasi ang daming options in between from... Uh, Siyempre, hindi ko naman sariling ideas to. Ang daming expert, like yes. Justice Carpe said, we can have sea boundary agreements with other claimant states like Vietnam, Malaysia. Uh, the Philippine government can enter into agreements to have a maritime, uh, an environmentally safe or protected area. So, ang daming pwedeng confidence-building measures. At saka, number two, Vietnam mm -hmm. is a claimant then sa South China Sea. Bakit sila? They can stand up to China. Nagpoprotesta sila bawat galaw ng China sa South China Sea. Yet they have good trade relations. They have uh, they have a lot of Chinese investments. So, anong difference ng Vietnam at saka Philippines? Is it because communist to communist party? Mm -hmm. Hindi ko rin masyadong alam yung nuances, but if Vietnam can do it, why not the Philippines? Mm -hmm. Na pwede naman tayong mag-stand up to China. At the same time, we deal with them normally when it comes to trade and uh, tourism and investments. At saka, uh, naalala ko lang, um, kaya rin naging uh, rock-solid victory na tinatawag yung atin kasi uh, naalala ko na hindi naman nila inasahan na ibibigay ng tribunal, mm. ipapanalo tayo sa mm. lahat ng uh, points. Kasi ang sabi ng mga uh, abogado natin noon, uh, usually, nagdalagay sila ng mga mahihinang uh, argument para um, kumbaga, kung may matatalo, at least hindi lahat. Mm -hmm. na nagulat sila, kaya sinasabi lagi na overwhelming victory mm -hmm. dahil uh, nagulat sila na parang aba, lahat pala pinagbigyan. Mm -hmm. May mga weak points sila na ina-acknowledge nila pero nanalo. Ngayon, kailangan maibalik yun dun sa sinasabi natin na um, hindi nga ni raise yung ruling. Kaya lalong nakakapagtaka para sa maraming experts kung bakit hindi ni raise Kasi nga overwhelming uh, mm -hmm. victory. Pwede mo bang balik, balikan yung time na um, yung nalaman na natin na, na, na nanalo mm -hmm. tayo sa The Hague uh, at inannounce ito sa, sa DFA? Uh, Do you remember those moments? <laughs> Sinanong yeah. ko din yan nung ginagawa ko yung libro, di ba? Oo. Walang feelings. <laughs> Uh, kasi, first of all, yung mood ng mga reporter doon, anxious, hindi lang dahil sa naghihintay sa ruling, pero kasi walang signal doon sa loob ng DFA. <laughs> so, imagine yung talagang uh, kating-kating na lahat, tapos mm -hmm. naiinis. So, we were, yung mga journalists inside the press office were not in, uh, in exactly in a very uh, celebratory mood. Precisely because walang signal, mm -hmm. uh, ang tagal dumating. And then, papasok si Secretary Yasay, magwabasa ng mm -hmm. short statement, mm -hmm. na malungkot din siya, seryoso yung mukha niya. <laughs> Tapos, uh, nung pagkatapos basahin yung statement, magtatanong na kami, umalis na siya. No questions. So, kumbaga, hindi namin naramdaman na nanalo, nanalo tayo. Mm -hmm. Parang empty victory. Well, yun ang sinasabi ngayon ni uh, Secretary uh, Lorenzana. Lorenzana. Ngayon, kailangan lang balikan, babalikan ko lang din, a few months bago ilabas yung ruling, tinanong namin sa DFA, is the Philippines open to having uh, bilateral talks with China? Mm -hmm. Ang sagot ng DFA, yes, after the ruling. Mm -hmm. Kasi uh, naalala ko noon, ang sabi ng DFA, we will have no choice but to talk to China again. Mm -hmm. But the difference now is uh, we will have a strong ruling with us as leverage kasi mm. sila mayaman sila malakas malaki. sila tayo mahirap mahina ang pinangahawakan mo na lang eh para kumbaga eh may titulo ka ng lupa mm -hmm. pero nanalo ka nung titulo eh hindi mo pa ginagamit mm -hmm. so yun kaya lalong nagtataka yung mga experts merong ding discussion Marites in your book about ito aba. Mm -hmm. um, nung una, parang ano to? Parang oh. why is there so much fuss created no, by yung definition, ito ba ay, ang ito aba ba ay rock, rock or ito ba ay island? Mm -hmm. um, what's the significance of, of that whole oh. discussion on ito aba? I remember nung lumabas yung ito aba issue, 2017 na ba yun? Hmm. Sabi ko, ano ba yung Ituaba na yan? <laughs> anyway, Ituaba is the largest feature in Spratly's and it's occupied by Taiwan. 
ngayon so rocks ito ro rock itong ito aba uh -oh. declared rock by the tribunal ngayon since ito aba since rock na ang ito aba ibig sabihin wala na siyang overlap with palawan kasi and red bank if it was declared an island uh, which means that it's entitled to 300 ilang 300 ba um, pag island, pag -island 200, 200 nautical miles. miles so if it were an island magkaka overlap ang ito aba and palawan and red bank so this okay. magiging disputed mm -hmm. but since the ruling said rock siya wala na tayong dispute between uh, overlapping claims between ito aba palawan and red bank mm -hmm. so meaning very clear that the Philippines has exclusive right to use the resources in this area. Mm -hmm. Remember, yung Reed Bank, pwede na tayong mag-survey for oil, kaya lang hindi po natin ginagawa dahil I think the Philippine government now ayaw i-displace ang China. Mm -hmm. But that's one, alam mo, interesting dito sa case, nag-submit tayo ng 15 submissions. Wala dun yung ito, Aba. It was just discussed in the memorial, mm -hmm. pero hindi siya, we did not ask the ano tribunal. Memorial? memorial is like a uh, explanation Isipit, baka, of the akalain nila memorial Loyola plan. Memorial. <laughs> <laughs> Ang memorial is um, explanation of the Philippine case. Okay. Ito na yung arguments. Wala doon, tapos memorial, ang last part is called submission, mm -hmm. meaning, ano yung mga items na we're asking the tribunal to rule on? Wala doon yung ito aba, diniscuss lang sa body ng memorial. So, bonus yon for the Philippines. It's a big bonus na nanalo tayo doon. Mm -hmm. And mukhang doon, the, even the Taiwanese government was not very upfront. Correct. Parang may deception. Yes, you know, that's uh, one of the more parang th thrilling parts of the, of the research was that nung last Last minute ang Taiwan naglobby na they submitted um, amicus curiae, ano ba yun? friends of the court, nagsubmit sila ng brief to the tribunal saying that ito aba is an island. So last minute yun, tapos na ang Philippines, tapos na tayong nag-argue, nag-deliberate na yung limang judges. Ang ginawa ng judges, which um, Reichler and the lawyer said was quite unusual, was they stopped their, they interrupted their deliberations and asked the Philippines to respond to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So, nag-additional work ang lawyers ng Philippines, nagkaroon ng additional research. Tapos, they found out Taiwan pala in its submissions did not give the entire annexes, yung original documents. And since they swear in Chinese, mabuti na lang one of the Philippine lawyers reads and speaks Mandarin si Larry Martin. Americano ito. American. Yes. And then they did very good research and they found out the entire documents. Kasi binigay ng Taiwan, mga kapira-piraso lang. They found entire documents showing that ito aba was really, uh, had not, was not capable of human habitation. Hindi pwedeng tumira doon ang civilians. It's now occupied by the military lang of mm -hmm. Taiwan. Okay, so ang, ang pinaka-importance talaga nun is in reference to Palawan. Correct, tama ba? yes. So yes. Dahil, and Reed Bank. Okay, so mm -hmm. dahil hindi siya, hindi siya island, mm -hmm. mas maliit yung, uh, yung EEZ niya. Yung maritime entitlement niya. Ang so hindi nila. walang overlap with the yes. Philippine territory. Correct. So mas malawak yung area na pwedeng um, i-explore. Ng Philippines. Or even gamitin ng Filipino Correct. fishermen. Diba? Yes, Tama. yes. In fact, na, na-realize ko lang when I was doing the book, na because of what Justice Carpio has been talking about, na the Philippines gained an area, a maritime area na mas malaki pa pala sa land area natin oh. and rich in resources. So, parang ang high stakes pala nito. Yun nga, one of my... So, that's uh, the real significance of this ruling, yes, di ba? Yes, oo. So, Eh, siyempre, ako naman, eh, journalist lamang, eh, matagal bago ko na, <laughs> na immerse ang sarili ko. Sabi ko, oh my God, it's so important pala. Yun. <laughs> and then there's another detail in the book which I found interesting also in reference to Scarborough, Scarborough Shoal mm -hmm. and the maps. Mm -hmm. Ano nga ba ang kwento doon? Kasi yung, well, ang China claims kasi na since whatever century, kanila na ang 
Scarborough Shoal. Mm -hmm. Kaya lang sa maps na na research una ni Justice Carpio and then back by maps also researched by the cartographer of the Philippine lawyers at Foley Hog, wala talagang Scarborough sa maps, old maps ng China. China. Hainan lang ang pinaka southernmost part. So wala sa wala. That's why that's the significance of the Murillo Velarde map. Nung una sabi ko, ano naman tong Murillo Velarde? It's uh -oh. the first map and the oldest map to show that uh, Scarborough Shoal was called Panakot Island and it mm -hmm. was always has always been part of the Philippines. At wala yun sa China. Hainan lagi ang ano. Ang, if you go to the office of Justice Carp, yun, naka-display lahat dun sa maps. maps. So, naintindihan ko. And also in his book, yung free book na pwedeng i-download. And e this map daw was cost, uh, what, 13, yes. 13 million pesos? Including insurance and, and bringing it to the Philippines. And it was used as one of one, only one of 170 maps. Mm -hmm. So, marami tayong pinisent na mapa mm -hmm. sa tribunal. How do you how do you see this issue evolving? Yeah. Kasi parang ngayon, um, it, during your book launch, yung mga speeches, parang ang, ang message pareho eh. Para mm -hmm. silang nag-usap eh. Oh. Si Justice Carpio at saka si Ambassador <laughs> Del Rosario na <laughs> Duterte, Duterte administration, please heed oh. the the, the voice of the Filipino people. Mm -hmm. uh, Magtiting na natin sa surveys, parang um, ayaw ng Pilipino na ibigay lang sa mm -hmm. China yung ano yung yung islands, di ba? Um, how do you see this being resolved, if ever? Uh, under the Duterte administration, siguro unless they, the president changes his policy, it will remain the same. Kaya na interesting kasi kahapon uh, nag we had a book event in Ortigas Library. Mm -hmm. Just a smaller group, pero very thoughtful yung question. Sabi nung isa, mm -hmm. isang new, new graduate, new, newly graduated student, sabi niya, ano ang magagawa namin sa ganitong situation na hindi ginagamit yung ruling? Mm -hmm. So, uh, nag-isip ako, sabi ko, well, it's maybe to speak up, as everybody's trying to do, to write. To, and then somebody raised his hand, mm -hmm. And then he said, if I may suggest, we should all make this an election issue. Mm -hmm. So, well, it kung don't... election. <laughs> <laughs> Ever the pessimist. <laughs> Pero kung may, pos may potential yon, mm -hmm. if it really gains interest, national interest, at we, people will vote for candidates who will uh, assert, who are for asserting sovereign rights. So, in in the interesting na pinag-uusapan na ng mga tao, at least dito sa mga events. Pero siguro yung challenge yan, making it uh, an election issue, is it sounds so esoteric Correct. kasi mm -hmm. you're talking about islands and um, and sovereign mm -hmm. rights, no? And it's very, it seems to be very abstract. Pero siguro nga yung, di ba merong isang recent report tungkol sa fishermen yes. na meron pala itong impact din sa ordinaryong mangingisda. Mm -hmm. Um, baka yun yung dapat na just to bring it down. Yes. In fact, uh, yung mga fishermen na na-interview ko sa Masinlok, Sambales, parang mas, may, parang mas may wisdom sila about this issue. Mm -hmm. Kasi they used to fish nung uh, pre-arbitration. And then, di ba, pinatigil sila 2012 Scarborough mm -hmm. standoff. Then bumalik na sila under Duterte, naka-fish na sila. Kaya lang, hindi sa loob ng lagoon. Doon lang sila sa labas. So sabi ng isang fisherman, sabi niya, e, bakit ganun? Dati nakakapasok kami. Bakit China pa rin? And then tinanong pa niya, anong ginagawa ng UN? Anong ginagawa ng gobyerno? So sa kanila may nag-resonate yung issue. So siguro ganun din sa ibang uh, fishermen. Lalo na yung nangyari na kinukuha yung kanilang uh, catch, yung, sel yung kanilang harvest of fish. Do you agree also during the, the book launch, parang, sino ba yung nagsabi na it's a de defeatist foreign policy? Si Justice Carpio. Si Justice Carpio yeah. rin. Paterno, di, anong sense? Nagulat ka ba dun? Medyo strong words. Very yung, strong. Yung, ano, Alam mo, eh, nagulat ako speech, no? na one of the strongest, ba the strongest speech yata ni Justice Carpio? Oo. Oh. Ano, totoo talaga. Sinasabi talaga ng maraming mga kritiko na defeatist yung... Uh, uh, stance ng gobyerno natin kasi nga nanalo ka na bakit parang ikaw pa yung talo 
Mm. Ngayon, um, yan nga yung sinubukan nila dati na baguhin. May nakausap ako, ako dati nga diplomat na dati daw ang mindset sa DFA ay uh, if you are being raped, why why uh, why not just enjoy it? Mang lapos yan. Why not sit back and, and just enjoy, enjoy it? Oh. Uh, dati yun. Ngayon, yeah. hindi na. Nung nag-file ng kaso, you are raping me, I will file a case against you. Mm. So, mas palaban. Ngayon, parang nakikita natin, parang bumabalik tayo dun sa why not just enjoy it uh, uh, mindset na, all right, uh, you are raping our territory, but uh, we will enjoy the economic benefits. Uh, your loans, your uh, investments, parang ganun. Parang may nagkasabi na nagka-slide back tayo sa uh, ganung mindset. Pero, yun nga, dun din makikita yung wisdom ng uh, pag-file ng uh, kaso laban sa China. Dahil sinasabi nila noon, kailangan na nating i-file ang kasong ito para kung sino man yung pumalit na Pangulo, nandyan na yung ruling. Magbago man, sa next administration, po pwede pa rin pick up in yung uh, ruling, ruling uli. Ngayon. Except may mga nagasabi ngayon na parang sa mga statement ng Pangulo, baka mamaya, effectively, wini-wave natin yung ating pagkapanalo. So, sinasabi din ng mga marami eksperto na hinay-hinay ang, ang Pangulo. Dahil kahit anong sangbihin niyang mga bagay, ay uh, words yun ng chief architect of uh, foreign policy. Kaya, uh, baka mamaya mamisconstrue as uh, we are waving our, our rights. Mm -hmm. Sabi mo, Marites, kanina, uh, yun nga, power... Um, kung may vacuum, may, may mm -hmm. papasok at papasok, no? And um, China has really taken advantage kasi the Philippines has not also um, used this, this award mm -hmm. to its advantage. Nakikita mo ba that there will be growing militarization? Actually, nakikita na nga natin yan. Pero mas, mas lalawak pa ba yan? And mas makikita ba natin yung expansion pa ng, mm -hmm. ng China in in the region? Well, according to Foreign Affairs Secretary Cayetano, during the congressional hearing, mm -hmm. itong recent lang, called uh, on the West Philippine Sea, sinabi niya na he called it the red line, that the Philippines daw told China, there is a red line, do not take over or con uh, do not build on Scarborough. Mm -hmm. So yun, yun, kasi Scarborough is ngayon ang banabantayan eh. Kontrolado nila, pero hindi pa sila nagbibuild. Am I right? Oh, na parang ganun na nga. Wala pa. Wala pang binibuild na structure. But, if they start to build there, then makikita natin na yun ang, it's a um, malaking issue yan dahil uh, pinag-usapan na daw nila, Philippines and China, na huwag mang bibuild doon. But, of course, militarized na yung iba. Mm -hmm. Lahat, almost all of what China's occupied, including mischief Reef. Imagine, yes. Bata ka pa ba China, 1995? <laughs> when, when China grabbed, ikaw, bata ka pa, 1995? When China grabbed Mischief Reef. Mm -mm. Imagine, and they lied to the Philippines. They said, no, no. And then they built me structures na pala. Mm -hmm. Pero sabi nila kay President Ramos, well, in, in official communications, no, wala, there were no structures. They were just shelters for fishermen. Mm -hmm. Na-check ng Philippine military, nag-survey, uh, the patrol, they are, they are not shelters for fishermen. They had signal, what they call this, para, parabolic antenna. Mm -hmm. These were for the military. Mm -hmm. So we were caught unaware. So baka gawin din yun sa Scarborough. At, at saka, mother, fear. nung time ng mischief reef, hindi pa ganun ka-powerful ang China, hindi ba? Correct. Pero ang sinasabi ng maraming analysts, uh, China thinks in terms of centuries. Mm -hmm. Long term. Uh, oh, oh, hindi katulad nung sinabi dito sa libro na we are, we Filipinos lack uh, strategic thinking. Mm -hmm. Sila, kahit mahirap pa sila noon, at eh, hindi naman ganun kahirap, pero hindi pa sila ganun ka, mm -hmm. kayama noon, alam na nila kung saan na nila dadalhin. So, siguro, dun sila, dun sila nagsimula, and then, uh, because they think in terms of centuries, mm -hmm. alam nila kung saan to dadalhin itong uh, South China Sea. Eh, ang ASEAN, where does... Yeah. Uh, may maaasahan ba tayo sa ASEAN dito? Kinover ni Paterno ang ASEAN. Di ba? Dahil mong pinuntahang meetings. So next week, <laughs> makikita na naman yung mga foreign minister ng ASEAN sa Singapore. I think uh, June 30 to... Uh, July 30 to Pero, August 4. Paterno, is the Philippines the chair of ASEAN-China 
um, relations. Ay, yung yung uh, yung part lang na yon. Yun uh, lang. Mm. Kailan so, tayo chair? Oo. Oh, oh. oh, but uh, as far as I uh, understand, an lang yan. Parang isang uh, part lang yan nung uh, nung ASEAN. Pero ang chair talaga ng ASEAN yeah, ngayong taon Singapore. is Singapore. Okay. So doon gaganapin yung meeting. Makikita-kita yung mga foreign minister kasama si uh, Secretary Cayetano. Pag-uusapan na naman nila yung uh, South China Sea. Pero madalas marami ang kasabi na nagiging talk shop na lang itong, itong ASEAN dahil uh, maglalabas ang statement, wala namang nangyayari on the ground. At saka yung lagi pinopoint out ng mga kritiko, yung uh, consensus uh, system ng ASEAN. Oh, hindi pa rin nagbabago. Mm -hmm. Na sampung bansa kayo, pero pag may isang hindi umayon, yeah. bawal din yung batikusin ang China. Mm -hmm. So, kailangan, kasi daw ganun ang ASEAN, the ASEAN, mm -hmm. way. The ASEAN way. Pero yes. may kasabi na dapat maging majority rules na dahil uh, hindi, may, 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 may mga kritiko na kasabi na may mga tuta na kumbaga yung China yeah. sa mm -hmm. ASEAN na ibablock kahit anong uh, gawin na uh, magbabatiko sa China. So, next week, aabangan natin kung ano yung pag-uusapan nila about the, the South China Sea, uh, yung paggawa nila nung uh, tinatawag na Code of Conduct, uh, kung hanggang saan yung maabot nila sa pag-uusap tungkol dyan. Sige, mukhang mahaba pa tong usapang ito, ano? Um, but we, sh we should be monitoring it and following it very closely. And maganda nga yung suggestion na gawin siyang isang election election mm -hmm. issue because sayang yung yung award um, mm -hmm. it's it's to our advantage pero hindi natin binibigyang halaga or at least this present administration does not seem to give it um, that much importance mm -hmm. uh, siguro Marites, um, if you can tell them lang where where else <laughs> they they can buy the book and where you will be going, meron okay. pa bang ibang launches oh. or talks? Uh, ang good news is that we're reprinting already a second edition. Wow. Oh. So, na na naman na. Na so that means may interest yes. sa subject. So ang um, uh, we'll be going to Davao in August and then Cebu in September and then. Uh, Canberra in August also. Wala ba sa CDO? Merong nag, ano kasi, Oo nag nga, email, meron din nagtanong. We're, we're going to plan with my publisher, Ateneo University Press. But I think my dream is, or at least my goal, is for all colleges and universities to have this in their library. Kaya yun ang aking pinag-iisipan as how can they have access to this book. So... Because it's only in a few bookstores, Fully Book, Popular, Solidaridad. I'm not sure kung nasa probinsya na, but we'll, we'll, I think Fully Book will bring it to its provincial branches in Cebu and Davao. And CDO if I think they're there. Yeah. Okay. Um, maraming salamat, Marites. Salamat, Paterno. Uh, thank you for listening to, to our discussion today. It's very important for, for all of us. To, to understand what is at stake in the West Philippine Sea. And Marites's book is really an easy read. Um, maiintindihan nyo yung issue pag, pag binasa nyo yung libro. Um, join us in our next episode of Newsbreak Chat. Thank you very much.